this video we're going to be taking a look at how to play the Roxy music song more than this from the Avalon album now in the uh, 1980s I remember my dad buying a Hitachi separate hi-fi with big massive speakers that were mounted on the wall and this was one of the albums that he played and it was my first really experience um, at an album that was like a soundscape where all the songs seemed to blend into, into one Many people view Avalon as a kind of commercial record compared to earlier um, Roxy Music songs, but I always liked this album. And I mean, a few of the albums used to play, it was always on a Sunday night. It was this one, Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits, I remember, um, and also Dark Side of the Moon. Although very different albums, all seem to have like a, almost like a soundscape and a feel to them, which I always liked. Because of the production on this being very 80s and keyboards and synth, we tend not to think of it as being something we could play on an acoustic guitar. And uh, we're using the capo on the first fret to make life easier. I've done a chord sheet for it, all on one sheet. Uh, the link being in the description to the blog. In the introduction, we're holding a C chord down and we're going to play it. No, we're not, we're going to play it. play that four times. So all we're doing is holding the C chord down. I don't really think there's any need for guitar tablature at this point. The B and the G string. We're then going to hit the A string with our thumb and then go. So. Do that four times. So we've got all together we should have. So the verse, the chords we need for the verse are F, B flat, G minor, to C. And the way we're going to do that is, I could feel at the time there was no way of no And it's really that chord progression round uh, in a loop for the verses. Rhythmically, yeah, obviously it isn't the original, it's on acoustic guitar, so there's a use your own sense of feel and your own sense of rhythm. That's the way I'm playing it. So what I've got is I could feel at the time there was no way of knowing. So for the chorus, it's really just F to B flat. But watch out at the end of verse one because the play along with the record, uh, we have this. More than that, bleeding into it. So watch out for that. But it's saying that it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Now there's a bit of a break in it because it's on synth and a uh, keyboard. We could just play it like this. So if we're doing it like a busker's version, that would sound a bit boring. So what we could do is do our C chord up there and up there. That is, if we didn't have the cap one, that we, we would be, we, we, we would be referring to that as the ninth fret. 
to an F shape on the ninth fret. Go to the B flat and do an F shape on the seventh fret. So what we could have is. I think it sounds a bit more fuller, uh, but that's obviously a choice for you to be able to make. But it does sound up to me, it does sound better. Um, then we have verse 2, exactly the same chord progression as verse 1. It was Then we have that break again. And another chorus more. So that is, it's a kind of a chorus, but it's, it's almost like the beginning of a guitar solo about to happen with a bit of singing. If you notice with the choruses, um, every time Brian Ferry sings it, lyrically, it's not exactly the same. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there is nothing, and sometimes he says that there is nothing. Um, so if you want to be pedantic and totally accurate, uh, watch out for that. We then have that break again. And really, the last part of the song is just this F, B flat, G minor, C, repeat and fade, just over and over again. And you could, you know, if you're playing with a band, you could improvise over it. Thank you for watching and I hope that tells you a bit to play Roxy Music's more than this.